I am Jose C. Laurel V. Uh, I am the son of the former Philippine ambassador to Japan, Jose S. Laurel III. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am the grandson of uh, Dr. Jose P. Laurel, former president, former chief justice, and former senator of the Republic of the Philippines. Aside from that, I used to be the governor of Batangas. And oftentimes I'm asked, what is your claim to fame? The uh, achievement I've made, which I relish, is that I was the only nationalist governor during martial law and elected in the opposition. I was the governor of Batangas the only nationalist, the only surviving uh, governor at the time of uh, the EDSA revolution. There were two of us, Bono Adasa and Bono of uh, Misamis, Occidental. But uh, Bono, by 1984, decided to go to the Batasan. I got uh, nominated and appointed by President uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte when I was already 72 years old. Most people retire at 65. And I was on my uh, last vestiges of my corporate life after being governor for almost 10 years and became an OFW worker uh, immediately after in Indonesia. I was uh, finishing my obligations to my family by supporting my children in their uh, decided endeavors of career. Uh, however, in the election year of 2016, the family, when I say the family, the, the clan uh, on the majority decided to support President Duterte. We called him in, he explained his political position, his programs on government, his definition of leadership and governance, and we decided to support him. Fortunately, he won. He wanted to put in a laurel in his government, and uh, because we are known to be educators too, not just political leaders. He wanted the Department of Education to be headed by my first cousin, a very capable young man of, I think, 56 or 54 at that time. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Peter decided not to because he runs our school uh, in Batangas. and. He's professionally running it. And we are extending our, uh, or expanding our school to Davao. And he says, well, it's hard to expand the school if you're in government. And it will be against the very nature of the job that uh, it might be contrary to what we are doing now. So he said, kumpwe di lang hindi. By that time, the president decided, I want to have a laurel in the, the government. And he says, I'll uh, get uh, Governor Laurel. He's a businessman, a former politician, who uh, helped me and led uh, the campaign for him in Batangas. So 
I said, kung maari lamang, wag na, may edad na ako. Karamihan ng tao, eh, retirado at 65, eh, lagpas na. But he insisted. So I said, well, when the president who is sworn into office is already the president, and he asks you, you cannot and do not refuse. The simple marching order of the president has always been this. Perform very well to the best of your capabilities. If there is something that he asks, and it's very hard that, you know, uh, you do not perform. But today, Japan uh, is providing almost all aspects of what the government, the Philippine government needs, from soup to nuts, literally. And it's the only country that has uh, provided not only the financial, the diplomatic, the economic necessities of our country. And I thank the Japanese government, specifically Prime Minister Abe, uh, and congratulatory that uh, Prime Minister Abe has uh, been successfully, uh, his party has been successfully re-elected, and he shall hopefully, in a couple of days, become the longest serving uh, Prime Minister of Japan since post-war. Now, the orders of the President do your job. My job is to foster continued friendly relations with mutual respect and understanding between the two countries and provide an atmosphere that is wholesome, creating peace within the region and our neighbors. And this is what I try to do. You see, uh, my direct family uh, has been doing Philippine-Japan relation for the longest time, even before pre-war. For your information, uh, my father was uh, a student here. He's the first Filipino graduate to uh, finish formally in Japan. He is the a, uh, graduate of the Rikugun Shikangako. Rikugun is army. Gakko is school. It's the army school. It is the Imperial Military Academy, the West Point of Japan. Sunhurst on the academy equivalent to the French uh, military school. And he spoke not only Japanese, he spoke royal Japanese, very polite Japanese. In fact, he is only one of two that uh, foreigner that uh, at the time that could speak directly to the emperor. And, you know, the uh, Japanese language is a caste language. There is a language for women. There, are, there is a language for men. Uh, the uh, Japanese language for doctors is different from that of an engineer or a lawyer. And he was one of two that was not born here. The other one was born here, was uh, born here, he was a foreigner, got educated, and married a Japanese, and became the ambassador of the United States, Rice Shower. My father was not born here, he did not marry a Japanese, and he spoke very polite uh, Japanese, royal Japanese. And the fact remains is that he also wrote and read high-end Japanese, long-hand, 
ang kanji niya, hindi yung shortcut, which is used today. And our history in, with uh, Japan runs more than 85 years. And the history of Japan is my, my own father was also incarcerated in Sugamo prison after the war. So it's my, my worthiness is not just because I am the son of somebody. I'm the son of a person that really was educated, well respected, and well connected with the Japanese community. I'm not talking about business. I'm not only talking about politics. I'm not only talking about the social hierarchy. I'm talking about the entire gamut of uh, living. At the end of the war, when the Americans had landed already, we were ordered by the imperial household or the imperial uh, palace to be repat to be uh, uh, evacuated to Japan. And uh, it took us quite some time, about six months, to get here during the war. We left Baguio in 44. It took us 10 days to reach to Gigarao to take in two airplanes to get to uh, Formosa, which is now Taipei, uh, I mean uh, Taiwan. And it took us one month before we got out of Taipei to land in Fukuoka through Shanghai and took the train from Fukuoka underground finally to Nara. In August, the first week, the bomb in Hiroshima was dropped. We were still in Nara. And when the war had ended, and, surrend and the Japanese uh, surrendered in August, end of August, uh, they uh, arrested my grandfather together with my father and uh, Don Camilo Osias and Don uh, Benigno Aquino Sr., the grandfather of Noinoy, the father of Ninoy. And they stayed, stayed there for 19 months. Three months in Kamioka, that's in prison, that's in Yokohama. And 16 months in Sugamo, where the trials were being made uh, for war crimes. And uh, after the declaration of independence, we, they were sent home. But that, the, the, the difficulty was not yet there. It did not end. They were tried for treasonable collaboration with the Japanese by uh, the Philippine government and stayed six months in Muntinlupa. No special uh, treatment. We did not live in uh, houses uh, in Talai or uh, special treatments like hospitals, no. They were in isolatory confinement in uh, Sugamo, and they were really in jail in Muntinlupa. Well, you know, as I uh, was telling you a little while back, every man must have a place under the sun. First, he has to acknowledge the fact that there is a supreme being, whether you call it Batala or call it Jesus Christ, call it uh, uh, Allah. 
that there is, should be faith in the Supreme Being. That our brotherhood of man transcends the political divisions of nations. An Indian American or a man from Borneo or an Igorot in the mountain province are human beings who have feelings, who have the same uh, objectives. They want to rise better from where they are. Have children. Educate them, whether in the oldest of standard or the highest. And they should give respect to one another. And that when you have achieved this, you have done your job. Life is very short. And Shakespeare used to say, it's just a stage. Once you appear in it, it's gone. So you try to do the very best you can. And, you know, leave a mark. What is a hundred years if you do live a hundred years? It is so a fleeting of a few seconds in the millennium of time. But leave something for your fellow men. Give them what my grandfather and my father used to say, and now I am an old man. Some dignity, some place to stand on under the sun and give the better, the better part of you to man, and specifically Kumbare, sa Filipino. The most important thing is we have to learn how to love our country because there's no place like home. I try to serve our country to the best of my ability. Be an example to my children of what should be done and what should not be done <laughs> and learn it. Sooner or later, you will go and leave a legacy of friendship with your neighbors, whether he be a Bicolana, because we are in southern Tagalog and you are in the Bicol region, and or with the Japanese or the uh, Indonesians or the Malay, uh, our neighbors. And that's, that, to me, is more important than the million, uh, the materialities of life. E, uh, what, ang importante yung iyong karangalan at paglilingkod sa bayan. At hindi matatawaran yun. Mahirap gawin yun. You have to understand, you see, the Japanese are very insular in nature due to their past history. You know, they were close for 500 years. It was only in 1864 that uh, Commodore Perry of the United States opened up Japan through the gunboat policy by entering uh, the Bay of Tokyo. So the Japanese are introverted in their ways they do not open themselves up easily to even the public, much less the foreigners. So it is a great impression to a Japanese that somebody from the province opens up 
his house to a foreigner. And that's quite impressive to them. See, the Japanese, if you look at it, they have very small houses. Hindi ka maimbita, you cannot just be oh, uh, welcome because you will elbow each other, walang lugar. <laughs> and uh, they're so private that if you get invited, most probably you have been friends for more than 25 years. <laughs> now, that is uh, my impression that uh, Prime Minister Abe, uh, who is the, who will be the longest-serving Prime Minister, uh, is quite impressed on the, on that uh, move. But apparently, uh, the Prime Minister's family, I have uh, been able to uh, know them uh, way back in the sixties, because it's. You see, his grandfather was also incarcerated with my father in Sugabo right after the war. And he, they used to be out, and my father used to translate for my grandfather his questions, the questions of the grandfather of uh, Prime Minister Abe. He happens to be a very significant person also. He's Prime Minister Kishi who was a very good friend of my father. Uh, although older Prime Minister Kishi uh, spent time discussing in Sugamo while being aired from the isolatory confinements of their incarceration, uh, they used to discuss. When it came time for the reparations uh, agreement and treaty, it was Prime Minister Kishi who negotiated with my father. And uh, we had the reparations agreement in 1955. By 1956, we normalized our uh, diplomatic relations with Japan. Of course, the family of my father was also there. And in 1960, uh, Speaker Laurel negotiated the Treaty of Amnesty, Commerce, and Navigation. Amnesty, Commerce, and Navigation. Uh, and it was also again a Laurel. And my father was always there because in 1952 when we signed the Treaty of Peace for San Francisco, uh, my father also translated the English to Japanese and the Japanese translation to English, because my father spoke, wrote, and read in Japanese. So, even all the properties here in Japan, which is quite a lot for the Philippine government, had uh, been purchased by my grandfather in Kodan, where I live, where the ambassadors of the Philippines live, or the place that you are right now here, or in Nampedai, or in Kobe, you know, all of these were specifically bought for the Philippines on the advice of my father. Uh, and this, these properties were bought properly, funded by the reparations, and the funds were uh, for the, from the reparations, which is actually the blood of our people. And now they are worth not only in the millions of dollars, but in the billions of dollars. And th that is the other part of our uh, diplomatic relations uh, with Japan. So if you are going to ask me uh, the status of our uh, relationship. It is the best as it has ever been. You see, Japan has been a uh, arduous nation to us. It has turned from enemy
to the most reliable friend there is. And the question you most probably would like to ask is, why? And the answer is simple. We have been able to forgive, but not forget. Forgiven, but not forgotten. We should learn from our experiences and from history. Otherwise, as they say, the old cliche, you are bound to repeat it. And why are we able to forgive? You know, there were more than 250,000 Filipinos who were killed directly. And another maybe 200,000 as, you know, victims of war, collateral damage as they call it. But we seem to have forgiven them. When there are 100, there, there are 1 million babies of Filipino Japanese or Japanese Filipinos, then you cannot anymore distinguish who is the Japanese and who is the Filipino. Ang mistiso ba ay hindi Filipino? Ay ang, ang, kung ang sinapupo ng pinanggalingan ay Pilipina, ay di Pilipino. At kung ang, uh, and vice versa, ay di Pilipino rin. Ay bakit mo pagkagalitan? Pahihirapan mo yung isang milyon? Ba hindi naman, no. And the history of Japan is more than just a uh, hundred years. Even the first blessed uh, person of uh, by uh, of Japanese origin, as proclaimed by the Pope, you know, Shogun Takayama, whose uh, statue is in Plaza de Lao, was a Japanese. He came from Nagasaki. He was a Catholic. And our very own Lorenzo Ruiz is uh, the first Filipino martyred in Nagasaki. So all of this history, you don't even realize that during the revolution against Spain, the Japanese supplied the guns to Aguinaldo and to, uh, for our effort for the revolution against Spain. What this means is that our blood and our citizens are one. Eh? So, eh, paano mo sasabihin eh, kung napaibig ka sa hapunesa, hindi Pilipino yung anak mo? <laughs> so, that is the reason why most probably we are the first uh, Southeast Asian nation that has become closer and have, have forgiven the Japanese for their atrocities in the past, and today we are, we are one. The numbers are not mm -hmm. quite important. You must uh, not forget. The reason why he is back was because there were two occasions where they should have met. I'm talking about the Empire. The first one was last October, but the emperor had to decline because his uncle, who was 100 years old, who was a friend of my father, <laughs> and a contemporary of my father, died. So he was in mourning. Now, and the next time uh, was supposed to have been sometime last July or or May, but uh, it has to be cancelled because the uprising of the terrorists in Marawi had occurred. So again, first things first. 
they had to address the rebellion in Marawi. And today, the president has declared that, not the president, the, the defense secretary says the Marawi offensive is uh, ended. Now, the reason why he's coming here was to, to meet with the emperor. And you must remember that the emperor has already, be give, has already been given uh, the right to abdicate uh, the uh, the emperor is is in, is in his mid uh, 80s and he's getting tired and this is, this is the last official chance that the current emperor can meet with the current president before there is a formal turnover next year and you know the the ceremonies and all this is very tedious. So that is the reason. Now, as to our f relationship, everything that the Philippine government needs has been already coursed through Japan. Everything. You name it, nan humingi na tayo ng tulong. This is the most important post, in my opinion, that uh, is doing a lot of uh, work for the Philippine government and the Filipino people. Name it, it's there. Agriculture, you talk about managing cooperatives, storage, of uh, finished products, marketing of uh, Filipino agricultural products, teaching them uh, how to grow better rice and utilize cooperatives. Talk about health, they've come to learn how to treat uh, the addiction of drugs and how they uh, rehabilitate them. We talk about hospitals. We have asked for at least five. You talk about transportation, the subways, the trains, the planes, the ships. You talk about public works and public highways, the ports the airports, even the roads the, where we are now faltering because we haven't built the roads for the longest time in its proper pace. Yeah. You talk about anything, tourism, and how it's more than 600,000 Japanese uh, going to, Japan, uh, to the Philippines, and the Filipinos have increased their cognizance of tourism here in Japan, but now they discover Sapporo <laughs> or Hokkaido or some, uh, some exotic uh, Japanese place and vice versa uh, because it is a symbiotic relation. Uh, if you look at uh, labor, they're asking for labor, uh, we are asking for adjustments on the requirements, they're trying to adjust uh, uh, the examinations and the requirements of being not just an OFW but a caregiver. In the case of, uh, of nations, between you and me and the Filipino people, the relationship between countries should be done with understanding and mutual respect. You know, good relations start from that. Each nation has its own agenda. We are friendly with Japan because we feel that their family ways are the same ways as the Filipino. They are sincere. When a Japanese 
company contracts with you. As they say in Tagalog, ipako mo sa bato. Pag sinabi sa iyo, i-deliver yan ng October 15, nandyan, nakadeliver. At ang interest ng inutang ay ganire. Now, other countries, I doubt whether they have the the capacity to say, yes, I promise this, <laughs> it's delivered on time, and the, there are no change orders or monkey business, and they uh, do it for the purpose of trying to help you in sincere effort uh, to deliver. That is one of the reasons. Uh, in so far as the Filipino co is concerned, we have to get the best and the most efficient and the longest lasting. You know, sometimes the best is not the cheapest. The best is sometimes the longevity and the continued service of the programs that you undertake. Of course, there are problems. But with sincere efforts, nothing can stop us. The, the biggest uh, thing that's going for the president is his actual sincere effort to move the country properly. And when I say properly, rid of corruption and the deliverance of goods and services to all including the poorest of the poor. For that, the president should be commended and that the Japanese have seen his actual sincerity. You know, most of the time when you hear criticisms, you ask yourself, who else will do it? Somebody else? No. Uh, no country has offered the same amount of help with sincere uh, intentions than Japan. Now you ask now the question, why is Japan doing it? Why? It's because the fact is that Japan needs us. We have the same body of water. They belong to the East China Sea and we are in the South China Sea. This is the trading lane in this part of the world. It has to be flowing. And the first country that will be encountered by Japan for its own very existence will be the Philippines. Why not make the Philippines a good friend? And if we can copy the Japanese in their discipline, orientation, and selflessness as a country, then the better this country, our Philippines, be, becomes. Is their intent. Now, Japan is more of a processing country, it does not have natural resources, so it needs shipping lanes to be open. You must remember that the cheapest mode of transportation is still water, not trains, because you can't build trains on top of water. And if you go follow the coastline, you'll have to make negotiations for the different countries. However, and it's also very expensive to use air, the cheapest is the sea until now. So you must make sure that even for us, in our own directions, we need the shipping lanes, the trading lanes in the sea. And this is one of the reasons why, aside from the fact that there are a million babies already who are Filipinos and Japanese, 
it's obvious that Prime Minister Abe is an advantage to us. You don't have to get to know another leader who has already been enamored with the Filipinos. And more convinced that under the leadership of Duterte, there is a sincere effort to move the country upward for the betterment of our religion. That uh, is my uh, understanding at this point in time. Number one, they need uh, trading partners. If we can provide the security, both in actual and in diplomacy, for uh, in this part of the world, that we can do. You see, it's not easy also that on top of their uh, country, there's a, 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 a country called North Korea who is been behaving uh, not the, uh, properly. And uh, it should be our concern because whatever reaches Japan can reach the Philippines because we are even f nearer to Guam. It is also our uh, concern that, you know, China helps out in trying to maintain the peace of the country. So beyond that, that is our part, and to help them out, to put our own little influence in the different parts of the world where we are uh, quite recognized and vote with them. The Filipinos back home have to learn from the discipline of the Japanese and uh, the, the character of uh, their well-being. To the Filipinos in Japan, uh, I would say, make us proud of you and do well.